In this lecture, we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. So let's start by examining the equation that we use to model exponential growth and decay. It's also known as uninhibited growth and decay, and it's modeled with the following exponential equation. A of t is equal to a sub zero times e raised to the kt power, where a of t is the amount of the substance being modeled after time t, a sub zero is the initial amount of substance, or the amount at time zero. T represents the amount of time that has passed. And K is the rate of change, expressed as a decimal. Note that if K is greater than zero, then we have growth, and so K is a growth rate. And if K is less than zero, we have decay, which means K would be the decay rate. So let's start with an example where we're going to use the exponential growth and decay model. The number n of bacteria present in a culture at any given time, t, in hours, is modeled by capital N of t equals 1000 times e to the 0.01t. First, we want to determine the number of bacteria present at t equals 0 hours. So, if t equals 0, we can plug 0 into the formula everywhere that we see a t. So n of 0 would equal 1,000 times e to the 0 0.01 times 0. If we simplify the exponent, 0 0.01 times 0 is just 0, so we have 1,000 e to the 0. And anything raised to the 0 power will be 1, so e to the 0 is 1, which will give us 1,000. And so our initial population of bacteria will be 1,000. Next, we want to determine what is the growth rate. So remember the general formula for exponential growth and decay models is a of t equals a naught times e to the kt, where k represents our growth rate as a decimal. We have n of t equals 1000 e to the 0.01 times t. So if we compare this to the general formula, we can see that k equals 0.01. And if we rewrite that as a percentage, that'll give us k equals 1% per hour. Next, we want to determine what will the population of bacteria be after four hours. So again, we'll start with our formula, n of t equals 1000 e to the 0.01 t. If we're looking for the population of bacteria after four hours, t will equal four. So we plug four in everywhere that we see a t. So n of four equals 1000 times e to the 0.01 times four power. And so if we evaluate that in our calculator, 1,000 times e to the 0.01 times 4 gives us 1,040.81. Now, since bacteria are individual beings that can't have a fraction of a bacteria, we'll round that down to 1,040. So after four hours, there will be 1,040 bacteria. Next, we want to answer the question, how long will it take for the population of bacteria to reach 1,700? So for this problem, we're going to continue with our formula. This time, n of t equals 1700, and we'll want to solve for t. So if we plug that into the formula, we'll get 1700 equals 1000 e to the 0.01t. We'll divide both sides of the equation by 1000, giving us 1.7 equals e to the 0.01t. To undo the exponential, we'll take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 1.7 equals the natural log of e to the 0.01t. And since the natural log and e are inverses, they'll cancel each other out, giving us the natural log of 1.7 equals 0.01t. Now to get t by itself, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 0.01. And that'll give us that the natural log of 1.7 divided by 0.01 equals t. And we can evaluate that with our calculator. We'll find that t is approximately 53.06 hours. And the final part for this example, we want to find out how long will it take for the population to double. So if our initial population was 1,000, then in order for it to double, we're looking for a population of 2,000. So we'll let n of t equal 2,000, and we'll want to find t. So this is similar to the previous part of the example. I'd like for you to take a few minutes and see if you can solve this. Once you feel like you have an answer, or if you get stuck, feel free to continue the lecture with me. Okay, so we plug in what we know to our formula. So 2,000 will equal 1,000 times e to the 0.01t. 
We'll divide both sides of the equation by 1,000, giving us 2 equals e to the 0.01t. To undo the exponential, we take the natural log of both sides, so natural log of 2 equals the natural log of e to the 0.01t. And again, since natural log and e are inverses, they'll cancel each other out, giving us the natural log of 2 equals 0.01t. To solve for t, we'll divide both sides by 0.01, which gives us the natural log of 2 divided by 0.01 equals t. And if we evaluate that in our calculator, we'll get t is approximately 69.31 hours. Let's look at one more example. This is going to deal with carbon dating. A fossilized leaf contains 70% of its normal amount of carbon-14. If this is the case, how old is the fossil that was found? And remember that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years. So to answer the question, how old is the fossil, we're going to need to take a two-step approach. The first thing we want to do is we want to use the half-life to find out the decay rate, or the value of k. We'll be using the exponential growth decay formula, so a of t equals a times e to the kt. And since we were told that the half-life is 5600, that means we can assume that a of t is equal to one-half of a0, and t is equal to 5600. So let's plug that information into our formula. One half times a of zero equals a sub zero times e to the 5600 k. We can divide both sides by a sub zero and they cancel out, so we get one half equals e to the 5600 k. To undo the exponential, we'll take the natural log of both sides, so the natural log of one half will equal 5600 k. And then to solve for k, we'll divide both sides by 5600. So the natural log of one half divided by 5600 equals k. And if we evaluate that in our calculator, we'll get k is approximately negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth power. Note that since this is a negative value, that indicates a decay rate, so that matches up with what we expect. All right, so now that we know the value of k, we can answer the question of how old is the fossilized leaf. So again, we'll use our normal exponential growth and decay model. So a of t is equal to a sub zero times e to the kt. Since the problem told us that the leaf contains 70% of its normal amount of carbon-14, we'll assume that a of t is equal to 0.7 times a naught, or a sub zero. That would rep represent 70% of a sub zero. We've already found that k is approximately negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth, and we're trying to find the value of t. So if we plug the information into our formula, we'll get 0.7 times a sub zero equals a sub zero times e to the negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth times t. We divide both sides by a sub zero, giving us 0.7 equals e to the negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth t. To get rid of the exponential function, we take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 0 0.7 equals negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative four t. And to get t by itself, we'll divide both sides by negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we'll get natural log of 0 0.7 divided by negative 1.238 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to t. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll find that t is approximately 2,881. So this fossilized leaf is 2,881 years old.